Welcome to the I Can't Sleep podcast, where I read random articles from across the web to bore you to sleep with my soothing voice. I'm your host, Benjamin Boster. Today's episode is from a Wikipedia article titled, Bread. Bread is a staple food prepared from a dough of flour, usually wheat and water, usually by baking. Throughout recorded history and around the world, it has been an important part of many cultures' diet. It is one of the oldest human-made foods, having been of significance since the dawn of agriculture, and plays an essential role in both religious rituals and secular culture. Bread may be leavened by naturally occurring microbes, e.g. sourdough, chemicals, e.g. baking soda, industrially produced yeast, or high-pressure aeration, which creates the gas bubbles that fluff up bread. In many countries, commercial bread often contains additives to improve flavor, texture, color, shelf life, nutrition, and ease of production. Bread is one of the oldest prepared foods. Evidence from 30,000 years ago in Europe and Australia revealed starch residue on rocks used for pounding plants. It is possible that during this time, starch extract from the roots of plants, such as cattails and ferns, was spread on a flat rock, placed over a fire, and cooked into a primitive form of flatbread. The oldest evidence of bread making has been found in a 14,500-year-old Natufian site in Jordan's northeastern desert. Around 10,000 BC, with the dawn of the Neolithic Age and the spread of agriculture, grains became the mainstay of making bread. Yeast spores are ubiquitous, including on the surface of cereal grains, so any dough left to rest leavens naturally. An early leavened bread was baked as early as 6,000 BC in southern Mesopotamia, cradle of the Sumerian civilization, who may have passed on the knowledge to the Egyptians around 3,000 BC. The Egyptians refined the process and started adding yeast to the flour. The Sumerians were already using ash to supplement the dough as it was baked. There were multiple sources of leavening available for early bread, Airborne yeast could be harnessed by leaving uncooked dough exposed to air for some time before cooking. Pliny the Elder reported that the Gauls and Iberians used the foam skimmed from beer, called barm, to produce a lighter kind of bread than other people's, such as barm cake. Parts of the ancient world that drank wine instead of beer used a paste composed of grape juice and flour that was allowed to begin fermenting or wheat bran steeped in wine as a source for yeast. The most common source of leavening was to retain a piece of dough from the previous day to use as a form of sourdough starter, as Pliny also reported. The ancient Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans all considered the degree of refinement in the bakery arts as a sign of civilization. The Chorleywood bread process was developed in 1961. It uses the intense mechanical working of dough to dramatically reduce the fermentation period and the time taken to produce a loaf. The process, whose high-energy mixing allows for the use of grain with a lower protein content, is now widely used around the world in large factories. As a result, bread can be produced very quickly and at low cost to the manufacturer and the consumer. However, there has been some criticism on the effect on nutritional value. Bread is the staple food of the Middle East, Central Asia, North Africa, Europe, and in European-derived cultures, such as those in the Americas, Australia, and Southern Africa. This is in contrast to parts of South and East Asia, where rice or noodles are the staple. Bread is usually made from a wheat flour dough that is cultured with yeast, allowed to rise, and bake in an oven. Carbon dioxide and ethanol vapors produced during yeast fermentation result in bread's air pockets. 
Owing to its high levels of gluten, which give the dough sponginess and elasticity, common or bread wheat is the most common grain used for the preparation of bread, which makes the largest single contribution to the world's food supply of any food. Bread is also made from the flour of other wheat species, including spelt, emmer, einkorn, and kamut. Non-wheat cereals, including rye, barley, maize, corn, oats, sorghum, millet, and rice, have been used to make bread, but the exception of rye, usually in combination with wheat flour, as they have less gluten. Gluten-free breads are made using flours from a variety of ingredients, such as almonds, rice, sorghum, corn, legumes, such as beans, and tubers such as cassava. Since these foods lack gluten, dough made from them may not hold its shape as the loaves rise, and their crumb may be dense with little aeration. Additives such as xanthan gum, guar gum, hydroxypropyl methylcellulose, HPMC, cornstarch, or eggs are used to compensate for the lack of gluten. In wheat, phenolic compounds are mainly found in holes in the form of insoluble bound ferulic acid, where it is relevant to wheat resistance to fungal diseases. Rye bread contains phenolic acid and ferulic acid dehydrodimers. Three natural phenolic glucosides, Secoisolaris arestinol diglucoside, P. comaric acid glucoside, and ferulic acid glucoside, can be found in commercial breads containing flaxseed. Glutenin and gliadin are functional proteins found in wheat bread that contribute to the structure of bread. Glutenin forms interconnected gluten networks within bread through interchain disulfide bonds. Gliadin binds weakly to the gluten network established by glutenin via interchain disulfide bonds. Structurally, bread can be defined as an elastic plastic foam, same as styrofoam. The glutenin protein contributes to its elastic nature, as it is able to regain its initial shape after deformation. The gliadin protein contributes to its plastic nature because it demonstrates non-reversible structural change after a certain amount of applied force. Because air pockets within this gluten network result from carbon dioxide production during leavening, bread can be defined as a foam or a gas in solid solution. Acrylamide, like in other starchy foods that have been heated higher than 120 degrees Celsius, has been found in recent years to occur in bread. Acrylamide is neurotoxic, has adverse effects on male reproduction, and developmental toxicity and is carcinogenic. A study has found that more than 99% of the acrylamide in bread is found in the crust. A study by the University of Hohenheim found that industrially produced bread typically has a high proportion of FODMAP carbohydrates due to a short rising time, often only one hour. The high proportion of FODMAP carbohydrates in such bread then causes flatulence. This is particularly problematic in intestinal diseases, such as irritable bowel syndrome. While in traditional bread making, the dough rises for several hours, industrial breads rise for a much shorter time, usually only one hour. However, a sufficiently long rising time is important to break down the indigestible FODMAP carbohydrates. Some flours, for example, spelt emmer and einkorn, contain fewer FODMAPs, but the difference between grain types is relatively small, between 1 and 2% by weight. Instead, 90% of the FODMAPs that cause discomfort can be broken down during the rising time of 4 hours. In the study, whole grain yeast doughs were examined after different rising times. The highest level of FODMAPs was present after one hour in each case and decreased thereafter. The study thus shows that it is essentially the baking technique and not the type of grain that determines whether a bread is well tolerated or not. 
A better tolerance of bread made from original cereals can therefore not be explained by the original cereal itself, but rather by the fact that traditional artisanal baking techniques are generally used when baking original cereals, which include a long dough process. A study also showed that a long rising time also breaks down undesirable phytates more effectively, flavors develop better, and the finished bread contains more biologically accessible trace elements. Bread can be served at many temperatures. Once baked, it can subsequently be toasted. It is most commonly eaten with the hands, either by itself or as a carrier for other foods. Bread can be spread with butter, dipped into liquids such as gravy, olive oil, or soup. It can be topped with various sweet and savory spreads or used to make sandwiches containing meats, cheeses, vegetables, and condiments. Bread is used as an ingredient in culinary preparations, such as the use of breadcrumbs to provide crunchy crusts or thickened sauces. Toasted cubes of bread called croutons are used as a salad topping. Seasoned bread is used as stuffing inside roast turkey. Sweet or savory bread puddings are made with bread and various liquids. Egg and milk soaked bread is fried as French toast. And bread is used as a binding agent in sausages, meatballs, and other ground meat products. Bread is a good source of carbohydrates and micronutrients, such as magnesium, iron, selenium, and B vitamins. Whole grain bread is a good source of dietary fiber, and all breads are a common source of protein in the diet, though not a rich one. Bread crust is formed from surface dough during the cooking process. It is hardened and browned through the Maillard reaction, using the sugars and amino acids due to the intense heat at the bread surface. The crust of most breads is harder and more complexly and intensely flavored than the rest. Old wives' tales suggest that eating the bread crust makes a person's hair curlier. Additionally, the crust is rumored to be healthier than the remainder of the bread. Some studies have shown that this is true as the crust has more dietary fiber and antioxidants, such as pronolysing. Doughs are usually baked, but in some cuisines breads are steamed, fried, or baked on an unoiled frying pan. It may be leavened or unleavened. Salt, fat, and leavening agents, such as yeast and baking soda, are common ingredients, though bread may contain other ingredients, such as milk, egg, sugar, spice, fruit, such as raisins, vegetables, such as onions, nuts, such as walnuts, or seeds, such as poppy. Methods of processing dough into bread include the straight dough process, the sourdough process, the chorley wood bread process, and the sponge and dough process. Professional bread recipes are stated using the baker's percentage notation. The amount of flour is denoted to be 100%, and the other ingredients are expressed as a percentage of that amount by weight. Measurement by weight is more accurate and consistent than measurement by volume, particularly for dry ingredients. The proportion of water to flour is the most important measurement in a bread recipe, as it affects texture and crumb the most. Hard wheat flours absorb about 62% water, while softer wheat flours absorb about 56%. Common table breads made from these doughs result in a finely textured light bread. Most artisan bread formulas contain anywhere from 60 to 75% water. In yeast breads, the higher water percentages result in more CO2 bubbles and a coarser breadcrumb. Dough recipes commonly call for 500 grams of flour, which yields a single loaf of bread or two baguettes. Calcium propionate is commonly added by commercial bakeries to retard the growth of molds. Flour is a grain ground into a powder. Flour provides the primary structure, starch, and protein to the final baked bread. The protein content of the flour is the best indicator of the quality of the bread dough and the finished bread. 
While bread can be made from all-purpose wheat flour, a specialty bread flour containing more protein, 12 to 14 percent, is recommended for high-quality bread. If one uses a flour with a lower protein content, 9 to 11 percent, to produce bread, a shorter mixing time is required to develop gluten strength properly. An extended mixing time leads to oxidation of the dough, which gives the finished product a whiter crumb instead of the cream color preferred by most artisan bakers. Wheat flour, in addition to its starch, contains three water-soluble protein groups and two water-insoluble protein groups. When flour is mixed with water, the water-soluble proteins dissolve, leaving the glutenin and gliadin to form the structure of the resulting bread. When relatively dry dough is worked by kneading, or wet dough is allowed to rise for a long time, the glutenin forms strands of long, thin, chain-like molecules, while the shorter gliadin forms bridges between the strands of glutenin. The resulting networks of strands produced by these two proteins are known as gluten. Gluten development improves if the dough is allowed to autolyze. Water or some other liquid is used to form the flour into a paste or dough. The weight or ratio of liquid required varies between recipes, but a ratio of three parts liquid to five parts flour is common for yeast breads. Recipes that use steam as the primary leavening method may have a liquid content in excess of one part liquid to one part flour. Instead of water, recipes may use liquids such as milk or other dairy products, including buttermilk or yogurt, fruit juice, or eggs. These contribute additional sweeteners, fats, or leavening components, as well as water. Fats such as butter, vegetable oils, lard, or that contained in eggs, affect the development of gluten in breads by coating and lubricating the individual strands of protein. They also help to hold the structure together. If too much fat is included in a bread dough, the lubrication effect causes the protein structures to divide. A fat content of approximately 3% by weight is the concentration that produces the greatest leavening action. In addition to their effects on leavening, fats also serve to tenderize bread and preserve freshness. Bread improvers and dough conditioners are often used in producing commercial breads to reduce the time needed for rising and to improve texture and volume and to give anti-staling effects. The substances used may be oxidizing agents to strengthen the dough or reducing agents to develop gluten and reduce mixing time, emulsifiers to strengthen the dough or to provide other properties such as making slicing easier, or enzymes to increase gas production. Salt is very often added to enhance flavor and restrict yeast activity. It also affects the crumb and overall texture by stabilizing and strengthening the gluten. Some artisan bakers forego early addition of salt to the dough, whether wholemeal or refined, and wait until after a 20-minute rest to allow the dough to autolyze. Mixtures of salts are sometimes employed, such as employing potassium chloride to reduce the sodium level and monosodium glutamate to give flavor. Leavening is the process of adding gas to a dough before or during baking to produce a lighter, more easily chewed bread. Most bread eaten in the West is leavened. A simple technique for leavening bread is the use of gas-producing chemicals. There are two common methods. The first is to use baking powder or a self-raising flour that includes baking powder. The second is to include an acidic ingredient such as buttermilk and add baking soda. The reaction of the acid with the soda produces gas. Chemically leavened breads are called quick breads and soda breads. This method is commonly used to make muffins, pancakes, American-style biscuits, and quick breads such as banana bread. Many breads are leavened by yeast. The yeast most commonly used for leavening breads is Saccharomyces cerevisiae, the same species used for brewing alcoholic beverages. 
This yeast ferments some of the sugars producing carbon dioxide. Commercial bakers often leaven their dough with commercially produced baker's yeast. Baker's yeast has the advantage of producing uniform, quick, and reliable results because it is obtained from a pure culture. Many artisan bakers produce their own yeast with a growth culture. If kept in the right conditions, it provides leavening for many years. The baker's yeast and sourdough methods follow the same pattern. Water is mixed with flour, salt, and the leavening agent. Other additions, spices, herbs, fats, seeds, fruits, etc., are not needed to bake bread, but are often used. The mixed dough is then allowed to rise one or more times. A longer rising time results in more flavor, so bakers often punch down the dough and let it rise again. Loaves are formed, and after an optional final rising time, the bread is baked in an oven. Many breads are made from a straight dough, which means that all of the ingredients are combined in one step and the dough is baked after the rising time. Others are made from a pre-ferment, in which the leavening agent is combined with some of the flour and water a day or so ahead of baking and allowed to ferment overnight. On the day of baking, the rest of the ingredients are added and the process continues as with straight dough. This produces a more flavorful bread with better texture. Many bakers see the starter method as a compromise between the reliable results of baker's yeast and the flavor and complexity of a longer fermentation. It also allows the baker to use only a minimal amount of baker's yeast, which was scarce and expensive when it first became available. Most yeasted pre-ferments fall into one of three categories. Poolish or poolish a loose textured mixture composed of roughly equal amounts of flour and water by weight. Biga, a stiff mixture with a higher proportion of flour. And pâté fermenté, which is a portion of dough reserved for a previous batch. Sourdough is a type of bread produced by a long fermentation of dough, using naturally occurring yeasts and lactobacilli. It usually has a mildly sour taste because of the lactic acid produced during anaerobic fermentation by the lactobacilli. Longer fermented sourdoughs can also contain acetic acid, the main non-water component of vinegar. Sourdough breads are made with a sourdough starter. The starter cultivates yeast and lactobacilli in a mixture of flour and water making use of the microorganisms already present on flour. It does not need any added yeast. A starter may be maintained indefinitely by regular additions of flour and water. Some bakers have starters many generations old, which are said to have a special taste or texture. At one time, all yeast leavened breads were sourdoughs. Recently, there has been a revival of sourdough bread in artisan bakeries. Traditionally, peasant families throughout Europe baked on a fixed schedule, perhaps once a week. The starter was saved from the previous week's dough. The starter was mixed with the new ingredients, the dough was left to rise, and then a piece of it was saved to be the starter for the next week's bread. The rapid expansion of steam produced during baking leavens the bread, which is as simple as it is unpredictable. Steam leavening is unpredictable since the steam is not produced until the bread is baked. Steam leavening happens regardless of the raising agents, baking soda, yeast, baking powder, sourdough, beaten egg white, included in the mix. The leavening agent either contains air bubbles or generates carbon dioxide. The heat vaporizes the water from the inner surface of the bubbles within the dough. The steam expands and makes the bread rise. This is the main factor in the rising of bread once it has been put in the oven. CO2 generation on its own is too small to account for the rise. Heat kills bacteria or yeast at an early stage so the CO2 generation is stopped. Salt-rising bread does not use yeast. Instead, it is leavened by Clostridium perfringens, one of the most common sources of foodborne illness. 
Aerated bread is leavened by carbon dioxide being forced into dough under pressure. From the mid-19th to mid-20th centuries, bread made this way was somewhat popular in the United Kingdom, made by the Aerated Bread Company and sold in its high street tea rooms. The company was founded in 1862 and ceased independent operations in 1955. The pressure vacuum mixer was later developed by the Flour Milling and Baking Research Association for Charlie Wood Bread Process. It manipulates the gas bubble size and optionally the composition of gases in the dough via the gas applied to the headspace. The old English word for bread was clough, cloughs in Gothic, modern English loaf, which appears to be the oldest Teutonic name. Old High German, Kleib, and Modern German, Leib, derive from this Proto-Germanic word, which was borrowed into some Slavic and Finnic languages as well. The Middle and Modern English word bread appears in Germanic languages, such as West Frisian, Brea, Dutch, Brut, German, Brot, Swedish, Brut, and Norwegian and Danish, Brot. It would be related to brew or perhaps to break, originally meaning broken piece, morsel. Bread has a significance beyond mere nutrition in many cultures because of its history and contemporary importance. Bread is also significant in Christianity as one of the elements alongside wine of the Eucharist and in other religions including paganism. In many cultures, bread is a metaphor for basic necessities and living conditions in general. For example, a breadwinner is a household's main economic contributor and has little to do with actual bread provision. This is also seen in the phrase, putting bread on the table. The Roman poet Juvenal satirized superficial politicians and the public as caring only for panem et circensis bread and circuses. In Russia in 1917, the Bolsheviks promised peace, land, and bread. The term breadbasket denotes an agriculturally productive region. In parts of northern, central, southern, and eastern Europe, bread and salt is offered as a welcome to guests. In India, life's basic necessities are often referred to as roti, kapra, aur makan bread, cloth, and house. Words for bread, including dough and bread itself, are used in English-speaking countries as synonyms for money. A remarkable or revolutionary innovation may be called the best thing since sliced bread. The expression to break bread with someone means to share a meal with someone. The English word lord comes from the Anglo-Saxon cloth word, meaning breadkeeper. Bread is sometimes referred to as the staff of life, although this term can refer to other staple foods in different cultures. The Oxford English Dictionary defines it as bread or similar staple food. This is sometimes thought to be a biblical reference, but the nearest wording is in Leviticus 26, when I have broken the staff of your bread. The term has been adopted in the names of bakery firms. A bread bowl is a round loaf of bread which has had the top cut off and a large portion of the middle hollowed out to create an edible bowl. They are typically larger than a roll, but smaller than a full-size loaf of bread. Bread bowls can be used to serve chili, New England-style clam chowder, and other thick stews often but not always with a cheese or cream base. Soups with thinner bases are not generally served in bread bowls, as the broth would make the bread get too soggy too quickly. The bread becomes flavored as it absorbs some of the stew's base and can be eaten after the stew has been eaten. Bread bowls are also used for dips, using the scooped-out bread for dipping. The British firm has marketed non bowls filled with chicken tikka masala. Spinach dip made with dehydrated vegetable soup mix is often served in a round pumpernickel bread loaf. 
Coffin lid or coffin bread is a Taiwanese variant developed in Tainan. It uses Texas toast, preferably those cut from the soft loaves popular in East Asia, deep frying the bread to a crisp. A layer of crust is then cut away to expose the inside, which is then dug out, allowing stews to be placed in. The crust layer is then replaced on top of the stew. A bread machine or bread maker is a home appliance for baking bread. It consists of a bread pan or tin at the bottom, of which are one or more built-in paddles, mounted in the center of a small special-purpose oven. The machine is usually controlled by a built-in computer, using settings input via a control panel. Most bread machines have different cycles for different kinds of dough, including white bread, whole grain, European style, sometimes labeled French, and dough only, for pizza dough and shaped loaves to be baked in a conventional oven. Many also have a timer to allow the bread machine to function without operator input, and some high-end models allow the user to program a custom cycle. Although bread machines for mass production had been previously made for industrial use, the first self-contained bread maker for household use was released in Japan in 1986 by the Matsushita Electric Industrial Company, now Panasonic, based on research by project engineers and software developer Ikuko Tanaka, who trained with the head baker at Osaka International Hotel to learn how to optimally knead bread. This machine had special ribs inside. A decade later, the machines had become popular in the United Kingdom, Australia, and the United States. While not viable for commercial use due to the fixed loaf shape and the limited duty cycle, bread machines are suitable for home use, producing their best results when dealing with kneaded doughs. To create a loaf of bread, ingredients are measured into the bread pan in a specified order, usually liquids first with solid ingredients layered on top, and the pan is then placed in the bread maker. The order of ingredients is important because the instant yeast used in bread machines is activated by contact with water, so the yeast and the water must be kept apart until the program starts. The machine takes a few hours to make a loaf of bread. The ingredients are first rested and brought up to optimal temperature. The ingredients are then turned into a dough by stirring with a paddle. The dough is then proofed using temperature control and then baked. Once the bread has been baked, the pan is removed from the bread maker. The shape of the finished loaf is often considered unusual, with many early bread machines producing a vertically oriented, square or cylindrical loaf very different from commercial breads. However, more recent units generally have a more traditional appearing horizontal pan. Some bread machines use the standard rectangle shape using two paddles. One Zojirishi model has a heating element in the lid to brown the crust. Bread machine recipes are often somewhat smaller than standard bread recipes, and are sometimes standardized based on the capacity of the machine's pan. Most common in the United States market are 1.5 pound units, and the majority of recipes are written for that capacity. However, 2 pound units are not uncommon. Packaged bread mixes are available, specifically designed for bread makers, containing pre measured ingredients, including flour and yeast, as well as flavorings and occasionally dough conditioners. Only water usually needs to be added. Bread machines generally do not deal well with non-wheat flours, so any recipe that requires a substantial addition of grain, such as rye or corn, that lacks gluten, will prove difficult at best in a bread machine, as will any dough with unusually large amounts of liquid, such as ciabatta. Generally, homemade bread goes stale faster than bread from a commercial baker because the former does not include preservatives. However, it is possible, though a bit more difficult, to use a natural leaven or a pre-ferment in bread maker dough recipes if the starter is sufficiently fast to rise. 
Sourdough contains a symbiotic culture of yeast and lactobacteria. The yeast provides some flavor as well as carbon dioxide to provide lift, while lactic acid produced by sourdough's lactobacteria greatly preserves bread, as well as affecting its flavor. While pre-ferments provide some of the same benefits as a sourdough culture, with a greater predictability of domesticated baker's yeast. Bread makers are often equipped with a timer to control when the bread making begins. This allows them, for example, to be loaded in the evening, but only begin baking early in the morning, to produce a freshly baked loaf for breakfast. They can also be set only to make dough, for instance, to be used to make pizza. Some can also be set to make other things besides bread such as jam, pasta dough, udon or mochi, a kind of Japanese rice cake. One of the most recent innovations is the facility to add nuts and fruit during the kneading process automatically from a tray. Traditionally, bread makers take between three and four hours to bake a loaf. However, recently, fast-bake modes have become common additions, many of which are able to produce a loaf in under an hour. Some bread makers sold in the 1990s had vertical pans, some horizontal. Today, the vast majority available make horizontal loaves. For that reason, they produce a smaller, shorter loaf than their predecessors. It is more difficult to mix a long, horizontal loaf because the ends are distant from the mixer paddle and gravity does not assist the distribution of the dough. Some machines attempt a better kneading by using two paddles, one at each end. The vertical loaf machine may require a higher-powered motor because the entire mass of the dough ball is on the paddle as it kneads the dough against the nearby sides of the loaf pan.